Hey, you guys, Brenda here. So today we want to talk about part two of the loneliness. In the last video, we talked about why. Why does that happen after divorce and and how common it is? And and there's justifiable reason that it does happen. But today I want to talk to you about uh, some tips that will actually get you through that loneliness, some practical steps that you can take, some ideas that you can cling to where you can pull out of your tool belt when you are feeling lonely, especially as the holidays approach. If this is something that, um, you know, divorce is just, let's get real. It's lonely. Even if you were ready to divorce that person and you wanted them out of your life and your life is better, it's still lonely and that is okay. Okay. So we talked a lot about that in the last video of why it happens and and it's legitimate and it's okay. But in this one, I really want to dive in real quickly and give you um, my top five tips for getting over that loneliness and, and things that will help get you through it, right? It, it, it is a thing. It is a time thing. It's going to take some time where you get into a rhythm and you might even get to the point where you enjoy your quiet time. That's where I got right. But I do remember that first time when all the kids were gone. Now, mind you, I have four boys. Plus, I had a husband. Right. So there were five men in the house. And when that house was empty, you could hear a pin drop and it was a creepy, eerie feeling. And the loneliness was like a tsunami that just consumed me. OK. And so it's real. It's a thing. It's okay. It's normal. It's natural. Uh, th- th- there's just no way around it. However, this is something I say all the time to my kids is face the fear and do it anyway, right? And so that's tip number one is don't be afraid of those feelings. When you're in that moment and you're sitting in your home and all of a sudden it's deathly quiet and you just, you like, it, it, it's, mm, what's the word? Like it just, it's almost like a, a, it's deafening, deafening silence. That's what I was trying to think of. It's, th- there's the silence is absolutely just deafening where you are ready to implode, right? That's where you get to get up and you get to grab your journal and you get to write down your feelings and you get to address, you feel to heal. I can't not say this enough. Feel to heal, feel to heal, feel to heal, right? You have to feel these emotions. If you stuff them away, if you try to just blow blow it off like it, it ain't no thing or I'm going to pull my bootstraps up or big girls, big boys don't cry. It, the reality is, is you're just stuffing it and it's going to come out at the least opportune time when you're road raging or in the middle of a business meeting or whatever it might be, or you're making irrational business decisions, whatever it might be, it will come for you, period. So you can be proactive and you can have a choice to feel, to heal. Like I said, however you want to do and work through that, and we can do another series on working through emotions, but get your journal out, write it out. And the, uh, and one of the best things I love to do with my clients is the why exercise. Well, I'm feeling lonely. Well, why? Because it feels empty. Well, why? And keep asking the why question until you drill down. Well, this might be an event that is, is stemming from when you were three years old and you got home from school and your parents were home and this overwhelming feeling of loneliness was there. So you can go back to that place, heal that three-year-old little self and that emotion that you exhibited then. And that will desensitize the loneliness that you're feeling now. It's not going to make it go away, but it could desensitize it. So you can get your journal out, write your feelings down, do the drill down on the why exercise. Okay. Another great tip is for you to go on a vacation. Best thing I ever did is go on vacation by myself. And it could be mini vacations. It could be staycations. It could be whatever. If you don't want to leave your, um, wherever your kids are, if, if, if your hometown, whatever, where you're, if, even if they're at their exes, but if maybe one's sick and you're like, Oh, I need a getaway, but I don't want to go far. Do a staycation, go downtown, wherever you live and stay in a hotel and go walk around and take yourself on dates. And that's tip number three is to take yourself on dates, date yourself. You can cannot give to anyone else what you don't have for yourself. So first and foremost, dating yourself is the best way to get to know yourself. Ask the question, am I somebody that I would want to date? Like, am I, do I present myself in a way? Am I behaving in a way? And I'm, am I optimistic? Am I fun? Am I outgoing? And it doesn't mean that you're not dealing with a mess of divorce and the loneliness. It just means that you have the tenacity and the character to get over this in a way that will be healthy for you and not in a way that's unhealthy healthy. So that brings me to tip number four, do healthy coping mechanisms. Everybody has coping mechanisms. I don't care who they are or what they say. They might tell you like counselors will often be like coping mechanisms are awful, da, 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 da. 
Everybody has coping mechanisms. You just get to decide if you choose healthy coping mechanisms or unhealthy ones. So obviously healthy ones would be eating right, um, going for a walk. That gives you cross-lateral movement. Cross-lateral means cross-body, right? The two diagonal sides of your body. Go for a run. Um, it forces, when you're doing cross-lateral movement, it forces your brain to utilize both sides of your brain to process your emotions. So that's an excellent way to uh, deal with those emotions. Feel them to heal. Go for a walk out of nature where you can cry and nobody has to see you. You get to be by yourself and you get to experience this with you, yourself, and you. You get to console yourself. You get to be the one to talk you through it. You're building your skill set to get yourself through this uh, challenge, through this loneliness, okay? And so um, go exercise, get a gym membership, go to movies, go out to dinner by yourself, take a book if you want to and, and shift your mindset. This was one of the, um, really important mindset shifts that I had when I was going out to dinner by myself is I kind of like initially I felt like, Oh my God, you know, people are going to have pity on me. There's that poor girl. She's all by herself and da da da. They've got to know I just got divorced. They've got to see all my sadness. And I, and I ran this story through my head, right? Where, where people are looking at me like, uh, oh, that poor thing. And they're like, I'm a victim and something's wrong with me. The reality is, is A, they're too busy with their own stinking selves. They're not paying attention. And B, I shifted that mindset to, I get to discover who I am. I get to have solitude. I get to read a book. I get to listen to a podcast. I get to color. I colored like a little kid when I went through my divorce. It was, in fact, I just brought this up to my kids just this weekend. I was going through some stuff and I was like, guys, do you remember how much we used to color? We called it color therapy. It was time to break out the crayons, right? But I had one of those adult coloring books and my own set of, of, of crayons. They were like the cool pen ones, you know, whatever. And, uh, and that I hid from my kids or else half would disappear, right? But I did that a lot. And just sitting there coloring, go to a uh, lakeside restaurant, go someplace that maybe you wanted to go that your spouse never took you to. If if there was a restaurant that you really wanted to go to, get dressed up for crying out loud. Take yourself to a movie, whatever it might be. Choose your coping mechanism and have a list. Make a list of things that, okay, when I feel this way, I'm gonna go do A, B, C, and D, or I'm gonna pick one of 10 things on my list. So you've got your resources to go to. When you're feeling that way and you're getting overwhelmed by emotion, you're not going to remember your list. You're not going to remember like, oh, I could go do da, 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 da. You're going to be like, what was that thing I like to do? I forgot. Or because when you're in a good space, when you're in an emotionally high space, your creativity flows and you're thinking of things that um, vibrate at that higher level, right? When you're lonely and you're in that negative emotional space, which I don't even want to call it negative, but it's a lower vibrational space because it's okay that you're feeling lonely. It's not a negative thing. But when you're in that space, you don't tap into that creativity. You don't tap into your brain doesn't associate with things that are going to make you feel good, right? So make your list when you're feeling great. Make sure that you've got this as a go-to resource, okay? And lastly, here's one thing that is absolutely critical to your success for loneliness have two to three close friends that you can be on call to. They might be married, they may not be. If you can get connected with a divorce community, that is ideal because you can establish people who are going through the exact same thing that you go through, that you have gone through. Because we've talked about this, I talk about this a hundred times, people who haven't experienced divorce have no idea what a divorce is like. They just simply don't get it. I've said it over and over, nothing uh, goes unscathed when you go through a divorce in your life. Every area is affected. So when you uh, know people and you're engaged with a community that that knows what you're going through and they're like-minded, their growth mindset, choose very, very carefully who you choose to hang out with. And if you don't have a community, join my community group. Pop in there, get active, ask questions, and get on there and ask people how you can engage or, hey, I'm struggling with this. What should I do? Any suggestions? Whatever it might be. But when you have people who have gone through it and they're on the other side of it, most importantly, A, it gives you hope and B, it gives you some camaraderie. Okay. So choose very wisely your top two to three go-to people when you're lonely and ask them, say, get vulnerable and transparent with them beforehand. Say, listen, this kid's really hard. There are some nights when the kids are gone that I just flat out am dysfunctional and I can't operate 
would you be willing to let me call you or talk to you when I'm in that space, right? Get their permission, let them know beforehand where you're coming from. And if you have a, create a code word. Okay, I'm in the lonely space. Then they know, oh crap, I need to come get you. Let's go, let's go, let me come grab you and we're gonna go ax throwing or whatever it might be. Have some canned things that you can go to so that you can get yourself and dig yourself out of this loneliness. However, these are tips to get through it. Don't ignore it. First and foremost, feel to heal. Get through those emotions first, figure out the why, and then you can get through it, okay? So those are my top five tips for you getting through your loneliness, especially as we head into the holiday season so that you can overcome this and get to the other side of your divorce. And I can assure you when that tsunami of loneliness comes, I'm living proof, my clients are living proof, you can get to the other side, you can get to a vibrant, loving, um, a full life that you are absolutely enjoying life uh, in and having a second chance at life, okay? So if you want more tips, make sure you subscribe below, hit the bell to get notified and like this video. And again, if you want a community of divorced people, get into our community, we'll put that link below and uh, we'll see you on the inside.